Hello everyone. I am Dr. Pooja, your biochemistry educator. And today I will be discussing some of the questions which were uh, which were there in the FMGE 2022 exam, which was conducted yesterday. Okay, so somehow from some of my students, I could gather only five to six questions. So today we will be just discussing those questions, right? So if you look at the first question, the question was, Kesel necklace is due to the deficiency of. Now see, if we look at this particular question, this has been asked in the exams in so many different ways. And at this particular questions, there can be some of other questions also which can be framed. Okay, so the options are niacin, selenium, copper, and iron. Always remember Kesel necklace is actually due to the deficiency of B3. B3 is niacin. And it is actually known as a atypical vitamin. Right. So, and in this, you can see dryness is there. Okay. And it gives the appearance of a necklace. So, this is casel necklace. Right. So, now let's study more about niacin because this is such an important topic on which so many questions have been framed so far. Why it is an atypical vitamin? Because it's found in our body with the help of sugar. 60 milligram of tryptophan is required to synthesize one milligram of niacin. And this tryptophan is a essential amino acid. And all of us are familiar with what are essential amino acids. They are defined as those amino acids which cannot be synthesized in our body and they have to be provided from outside diet. Now, why they are provided from outside diet? Because they are required for the synthesis of important compounds. So, the tryptophan being an essential amino acid is required for the synthesis of so, so many important compounds. And it is the most powerful reductant which is present in all the biochemical reactions as NAD and NADP. Then, tryptophan is required for the synthesis of serotonin. Serotonin, which is a very important vasoconstrictor in the body. And this serotonin is required for the synthesis of melatonin, the hormone secreted by the pineal gland which is required for the diurnal rhythm for sleep and awake process. And that is why it is known as essential amino acid. And once, if you look at the fate of tryptophan, it is glucogenic as well as ketogenic also. Glucogenic means it is going to give rise to some precursors of glucose. Ketogenic, it will be uh, converted into acetyl coenzyme A, which is related to fats. And this nicotinic acid or niacin, deficiency of this leads to melatonin. This is again a very important question from examination. Pelagra, which is actually characterized by CDs which stands for diarrhea, dementia, and dermatitis, leading to the fourth D, which is death. So niacin itself is a very, very important atypical vitamin synthesized from tryptophan. And deficiency of this will lead to dermatitis, dementia, diarrhea, and the manifestation is this casel necklace. So the answer was yes. Moving on to the second question. Complex 4 inhibitors are. Now, first of all, what is this complex 4? Complex 4 is one of the complexes of electron transport chain. 
just two or three days back, I had posted an exclusive video on electron transport chain. And basically that video was just to, you know, tell you people that what is the difference between inhibitors and uncouplers. Because I have seen most of the students get confused between inhibitors and uncouplers. So always remember this electron transport chain, transport of electrons is there. And there are four complexes. Complex one, complex two, complex three, and complex four. So they have their own inhibitors. And whatever transport of electrons is made possible here, some amount of energy is liberated at every step, which is required, yeah, which is taken by complex five to synthesize ATP. So actually, I should say that both the processes are coupled. Means electron transport chain and synthesis of ATP is coupled, and that is why it is known as biological oxidation. But here the question is simple complex one inhibitors. So let me just give you a diagrammatic representation, which is very interesting. In fact, see, if we talk about this is complex one, you can see the inhibitors of complex one are Barbitol, proteinone, which is a common fish poison, PRCDN A, and molybdenum. If you look at complex two, the inhibitors of complex two are melonate, carboxin, and TTFA. If we talk about complex three, as you can see here, it is antimycin, British antilucid, and hypoglycemic drugs like fenforbin, metformin. Question is inhibitors of complex four. So the inhibitors of complex four are cyanide, carbon monoxide, hydrogen sulfide, and this is a very important slide. Last year also, same question was asked in FMGE exam only. So always remember there's a difference between the inhibitors of complex one, two, three, and four. And if we look at the options, complex four is This is carbon dioxide, not monoxide. And oligomycin and ODM are totally different. They're not their inhibitors. Clear? Moving on to the next question. An adult presents with complaint of urine turning black on standard. What can be the most probable diagnosis? Now see, here some kind of, you know, terminology will be different. I will give you both the aspects. Here, question is, you have to actually target on urine turns black on exposure to air. That means this urine in the presence of oxygen will be oxidized, obviously in the presence of this, and it will turn out to be black. Okay, now let's look at the options. Homocystinuria, homocystinuria, in this, there is no change in this color. L-captonuria, obviously, because in L-captonuria, the urine turns black on exposure. MSUD, urine gives the smell of burnt skin. And always remember, whenever we talk about MSUD, it is due to, it is related to branched chain amino acids. Then we come over to piracy. Now, tyrosinemia can be type 1, type 2, and type 3. But in all the three, the enzymes are different and there is no change in the color of the urine. Okay, so the answer for this will be B. Now, some students were having a little bit of confusion in this. They told me that it was an adult presence with complaint of urine turning black on standing. What will be the enzyme? So if we talk about the defect in the enzyme, the enzyme is homogentisate, gentisate oxidase. Okay, and I'll just show you a very interesting, you know, uh, this is actually related to the metabolism of phenylalanine and tyrosine. I'll just show you the reaction one sec. Phenylalanine gets converted into tyrosine. 
Okay. This tyrosine will undergo being an amino acid, which will undergo transamination, forming pyrahydroxyphenyl pyrolase. Now, this pyrahydroxyphenyl pyrolase forms homotentosate, and this homotentosate undergoes this activity. The enzyme is homogentosate oxidase. Homogentosate oxidase. Forming this malyl acetoacetate. Ab now see if this enzyme is absent, there will be accumulation of homogentisate. And if accumulation of homogentisate takes place, it will be converted into L kepton type of substances. They are actually quinino acetates also. Right, and this is because there is formation of L kepton type of substance, so it will give uh, it the disorder will be known as L keptonuria, and the defective enzyme will be homogentisate oxidase. Right, homocysteine is related to the metabolism of methionine and cysteine. Maple syrup, BCA or brown sugar. And another very important uh, feature about this is this homogentisic acid. It, it gives a positive Benedict's test also. I just write it here. It gives a positive Benedict's test. This question was also asked somewhere, I guess, two or three years back. A big case history question was there, three to four lines. In that, it was mentioned. And this is, again, it uh, represents ochronosis also. Right. So here the answer will be l urea, And if the enzyme defect was asked, the enzyme is homogentisate oxidase. Moving on to the next question. The level of 5-HIAA. I could gather only this much information. Okay, I couldn't gather the rest of the information, but always remember one very, very important thing. What is this HIAA? It stands for hydroxyindole acetic acid. You know? How it is produced? It is the degraded product of serotonin. Serotonin, which is a very, very important vasoconstrictor, it is synthesized by tryptophan. Just now I told you one, uh, I showed you one slide in, I, in which I told you tryptophan forms serotonin and melatonin. So what happens? And always remember one thing, whatever is produced in our body, it has to be degraded. So see, if we study the metabolism of tryptophan, we study under two subheadings. One is dynamo acid, and second is serotonin acid. Serotonin acid. Um, now, what is happening here is only little amount of tryptophan is required to produce serotonin. And this serotonin, once its function is over, it will be degraded to form 5-HIAA. And this serotonin is required also for the by two-step reaction forms melatonin. Methionine is required for the transfer of methyl. Another very important point. Um, now see what happens is if the production of serotonin increases. Okay. If tryptophan is diverted to form more and more of serotonin, this kinemurin pathway will decrease. So niacin production will also decrease. One thing, pellagra will be caused. And if the concentration of serotonin is increasing, degradation will also increase. And this is a characteristic feature of calcium syndrome in the argentafine cells. So always remember, whenever we talk about HIAA, always remember one thing, it is related with serotonin. As you can see, serotonin is actually produced by the argentafine cells of the GI tract. When these cells undergo uncontrolled growth, it leads to arsenic. Right? So obviously there will be decreased concentration, the production of niacin also. 
So deficiency of niacin leads to pellagra. And the increased concentration of HIAA will also be observed in the urine. Right? The next question, a patient has swelling in the metacarpopalangeal joints. Uric acid levels were also increased in the serum. Now this somewhat related to this question was asked, I guess, last year or last to last year. Drug will act on which enzyme? Now always remember here two questions can be asked. One is, this is an example of competitive Now what happens is, if we talk about uric acid, so I just give a brief outline. Uric acid is produced from the degradation of AMP, adenosine monophosphate, GMP, and IMP, adenosine monophosphate. Okay, so ultimately they are converted into, this is a step five, this thing hypoxanthine, Hypoxanthine is converted to xanthine, which is converted to xanthine. Here the enzyme is xanthine oxidase. Here also the enzyme is xanthine oxidase. Okay. So what happens is phenylpurinol is given. This allopurinol actually is a competitive inhibitor of xanthine oxidase. Competitive inhibitor of xanthine oxidase. And this is a very good example of suicide inhibition also because allopurinol, what it does is it forms allohypoxanthine or it can form allohypoxanthine. So both allozanthine and allohypoxanthine are water soluble and they are excreted in urine. So obviously the concentration of uric acid slowly, slowly will come back to normal. So here if you look at the options, option says uric acid level. So it is xanthine Thymidylate synthesis is required for the synthesis of thymine from uracil. Adenosine deaminase is the amino group ka removal. So this adenosine deaminase or ADA is required for the conversion of A and B to IMP. Right? And this familiar with this enzyme, hypoxanthine, guanine, phosphoriboside. And deficiency of this leads to lean which is X. Right? So here the answer is D. And then, which vitamin deficiency causes tingling sensation? Um, now, the most appropriate answer to this tingling sensation should be B12. It is actually B12. But if you look at all the other options, folic acid is the most relative one to this question. B1, B2, and A does not fit in this category of tingling sensation. Right? So these were uh, the explanation of some of the questions which I could gather from some of the students. So if you guys have any other questions, you can just post them on the chat box so that in my next video, I can come up with more of the explanations. And I hope whatever questions I have discussed, the explanations are clear to all of you. So have a great day, day guys, and all the best for your results. Take care.